What's going on, Pete Moriarty here. I've just woken up to uh, Scott texting me, telling me that his Google account overnight started getting text messages with verification codes to log in, which is really scary. It's Sunday morning, I think it's seven or 8 a.m. And yeah, this is like red alert territory. So we're gonna start investigating. Um, so uh, here's what he sent me. Yeah, basically said, someone asked for a Google verification code. Yeah, 12.25 a.m. And that looks legit. I'm assuming this is in the same message thread that he's received other verification codes from. So that's pretty concerning. And yeah, like first step is to jump into myaccount.google.com and start checking out like what devices are in there and who may have signed in in the last 24 hours if anyone has. Now it goes without saying to pretty much immediately get a password reset done, uh, check all your two-factor authentication accounts are in check and make sure that you have your account locked down. But we also wanna do things like check the admin logs in the admin panel because that's gonna let us know not only every login, but where they're accessing from as well. So I'm in the garage right now, but uh, I'm gonna have a look at what's going on in the admin panel and see if I can see what's happening. Okay, logging into the admin panel. Of course, this is gonna prompt me to log in again, which is exactly what we want. Okay, and so I'm gonna go into security. Let's go to the alert center. Okay, no particularly large alerts there. Okay, yeah, we don't have any single sign-on setup, so that's not relevant. We have strong passwords enforced. There's 30-day frequency, but that's not for everyone. Let's go to reporting. Maybe we can find an access report inside reporting. User reports, accounts. Let's go to security and see if I can find any login attempts. Okay, I'm gonna search for any from Scott. Well, he's compliant with everything. He's got two-factor authentication switched on. He's recycling his password, so that's all good. Let's go to audit and investigation, admin log events, user log events. Let's add a filter for user Scott. And let's just see anything I can find in user log events. Okay, here we go. So the latest login was the 14th. Doesn't look like there's been any recent logins, so that looks pretty healthy. Oh, Scott's just... Okay, Scott's just texted me. I'm going to have a look at what he says. <laughs> I don't believe it. Hi, it's fairly early here on a Sunday morning in the Gallantly household. I woke up first thing this morning and checked my phone as you do when I saw the old Google verification email, uh, text message, you know, with the G, the numbers, and the, your verification code, which you generally get when someone's trying to log in to your account and you want to be verified. Alarm bells immediately rang, sprung out of bed, quickly checked with the team. Is anybody trying to log on to my account? And no answer at this time of the morning. So um, yeah, I was <laughs> freaking out a little bit, you know, as a business owner uh, and as an executive, someone logging onto my email and gaining access to basically like master keys, single sign on to all my apps, all my devices, uh, that's terrifying. I don't think they could have accessed my passwords because I have LastPass, which is a separate password manager, and it's not connected to Google in any way. So I sort of felt safe that I probably wasn't gonna have my bank account hacked or anything like that. But email and Google Drive and my Sana, anything that was like login with Google would have been up for access, not to mention I could have been locked, onto my, locked out of my accounts. So not a great start to a Sunday morning, but um, yeah, first thing I did was I just tried to log on to my Google and everything was fine there. So no one had tried to change my password. So that was like, phew, first. <laughs> First sign of relief. Second thing was I um, I pinged my team and said, oh, does anyone try to do anything here that might have caused this? And of course, at this time of the morning, nobody's awake. So um, <laughs> I had a nervous wait <laughs> for um, an hour or so before that started to happen. But in the meantime, I was able to get to myaccount.google.com, able to log onto there and went straight to the security settings. And I could see like what devices were logged in with my account what apps were logged in as single sign-on and had there been any other security logins or failed login attempts recently. So I was able to sort of see all of that, which was fantastic. So immediately, you know, actually found like some old apps that I wasn't using anymore, cleaned them up. So that was good. Found some old devices, cleaned those up. There were no security access attempts. My team member messaged me to say that at midnight last night they were doing some extra work and my phone happened to be the two-factor authentication method. So, hey, the system works, right? Two-factor authentication notified me when someone was trying to log onto my account, which is exactly what you want and would be the case if that was more of a nefarious issue. And yeah, Google gave me all the information I needed. So, although I'm tired, <laughs> not the best start to the Sunday, I'm all right. Okay, so I just got another text from the team and 
basically Mary, who's our head of support, said that she was working on a data migration and there's a secondary account, which is hello at itgenius.com, which we're actually depreciating and we're migrating all the data from that into the help desk account. And, and Scott's mobile number is actually registered to that account. So yeah, it was one of our team was the culprit trying to log into a Google account on our business. And that was triggering a two-factor authentication for Scott's mobile number. I woke up and saw Scott's message that he's received the verification code in the middle of the night. I realized right away that I triggered that because I was doing the accounts merging last night. So I knew that it was not something to be worried about, that he shouldn't be worried about it. But then I realized what if it wasn't me that triggered that, that was someone else. So I went ahead and checked and confirmed that it was really me that I triggered that verification code to be sent to his mobile number. So that was good and it was a relief. So there you go, crisis averted. Luckily it wasn't someone outside or it doesn't appear to be someone outside our company trying to get into Scott's account. But while I've recorded this video for you, really good opportunity for you to take a couple of these security precautions yourself inside your Google account. Number one, make sure that two-factor authentication is switched on for all users in your company and it's actually enforced in the admin panel. Number two, set up some password policies. Set up a complicated password requirement and require that your team refresh their passwords on a regular basis. At a minimum, every 90 days would be my recommendation. For executives, if you want them to have it a little bit longer, you can set up a separate organizational unit and change the settings for them, but that should not be longer than a year. Thirdly, if you're ever concerned that someone may have access to your account, periodically it's a good idea to go into myaccount.google.com, go to the security tab, and just check any devices that are logged into your account or have a session open that may not be recognized by you, or maybe you've logged in on a friend's computer at some point and you've left that login active, you can clear out those logins, and you can also review any of your devices that are currently logged in. And while we're at it, now's probably a good time to remove text message-based authentication from your Google account. Here's why. Text messages are not really the best way to use two-factor authentication these days anymore because there have been so many attacks on identities being stolen and then text messages being ported to a new number by someone calling your phone company, stealing your phone number, sending it to a new SIM card, and then receiving your text messages to a different phone. Now, generally accepted best practice now is to use a two-factor authentication app or token that you can issue online. So you know that you're actually gonna be locked to the specific individual device that you have access to or using a physical hardware key of some sort. You could use a key from YubiKey if you're accessing a computer, which is a USB key that plugs into the computer. Again, physical device needs to be with you. Google are also experimenting with passwordless logins, and I'm excited to see where they go with those in the future. So far, this looks like crisis averted, but it doesn't always happen that way. If you're interested in working with a partner such as IT Genius, we can help you out in a situation like this. You see, from time to time, we have customers who run into trouble where they are locked out of their account because somebody else has hacked in and they have no way of getting back into their Google account because it's been compromised and completely taken over. However, if you work with a partner, we have back-end access to your Google account. We don't have to pay for user license or anything like that because we're a reseller. We can basically get into the back-end of your account. And so, if you switch your billing to IT Genius for Google Workspace, you don't pay any extra for your licenses, but in the event that something does go wrong and someone does compromise your account, rather than trying to wait on the phone with Google support, you can reach out to our friendly support team and they'll be able to get you back into your account quick smart. If you're interested in that, there's a link down below and I'll see you in the next one. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius, or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.